Article 12. Madam Chairman, Article 12 shall assign a hand to vote to approve the cost items contained in a one year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Firefighters Local 2664, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. 2016, $54,912, 39 weeks over 2015 level. 2017, $18,304, 13 weeks over the 2015 level. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of $54,000, $912 to fund the cost items related to the Hampton Firefighters Local 2664 salaries and benefits for 2016. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2015 budget level for the 2016 portion of the one year that is contained in the agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the Firefighters Local 2664 pursuant to RSA 273A. The estimated total cost of the agreement and salaries and benefits and for the one contract year is $73,216 majority vote required. We had a vote of 12 yes and one no on this one. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak to this warrant article? Seeing none, I'll move on to article 13. <coughs> Madam Chairman, Article 13. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items contained in a one-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Town of Hampton, between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Officers Local 3017, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. 2016, $17,751, 39 weeks over 2015 level. 2017, $5,917 over uh, 13 weeks over the 2015 level. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of $17,751 to fund the cost items related to the Hampton Fire Officers Local 3017, salaries and benefits for 2016. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2015 budget level the 2016 portion of the one year um, that is contained in, in a collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the Fire Officers Local 3017 pursuant to RSA 273A. The estimated total cost of the agreement in salaries and benefits for the one year contract year is $23,668, majority vote required. Again, this vote was the same as the last, um, which was 12 yes, one no. Do I have anyone wishing to speak to this warrant article? Norman Silverdick, um, 70 Tide Mill Road. I'm also a spokesman for the Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. And while we've just received the Warren articles, the fact that the fire department contract was uh, rejected by the voters last year and our organization did not support that contract. This year we find this contract to be uh, very reasonable and uh, I will recommend to our group when we do meet and deliberate the items for the Warren article and the preparation yellow sheet that um, the, the contract with the firefighters be accepted. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Silverton. Item 13, Article 14. Madam Chair, would you like to discuss the change before or after reading uh, that we discussed earlier? After. After. Yeah, why don't you read it as it is, Very and good. then we can go backwards on the change. 
Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in a three-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Police Association officers, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. 2016, 72,616, 39 weeks over the 2015 level. 2017, 110,583, 52 weeks over the 2016 level. 2018, 114, 445, over 52 weeks over the 17, 2017 level. 2019, 26,353, 13 weeks over the 2018 level. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of 72616 to fund the cost items related to the Police Association officers' salaries and benefits for 2016. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2015 budget level for the 2016 portion of the three years that are contained in a collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Police Association officers pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 273A. The compounded cumulative cost impact over the three contract years is estimated to be $660,273. Majority vote required. Madam Chair? Yes. This is a uh, reworded article from the one we uh, discussed in the Budget Committee. Uh, as such, I think we ought to discuss it now as a Budget Committee and then open it for public after we vote on the article. And that's true for the next two articles as well. Do you have copies of these for us in writing? Or as you walked in, coming in now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would recommend to the committee right now that we move discussion, further discussion on Article 14 and 15 to the end of our session. That's all that we Madam Chair, I would suggest that the, the presentation of the Warren article with new wording effectively nullifies our vote on it. Warren articles that were worded differently. True, true. That so true. we have no budget committee stand on this to present to the public. And we really ought to do that so that the public can speak to whatever position we're taking as well as the merits of the contract itself. No. Just as we're doing with all the other articles. No. Yes, Scott. The you know, the meat of the of the article is the breakdown of the impact two thousand sixteen to two thousand and nineteen. That hasn't changed. It's it's a number in the in the last sentence that, that changed. Right. And, and I believe this these articles passed uh, the budget committee. So well, a, di a different article, a different wording passed. In, in, the last, in the last sentence, that doesn't impact the, uh, the taxpayer at all. Well, I disagree. A different article is a different article. Madam Chairman, if I may, yes, that this new amount is twice as much as what was in that similar line when we were considering it at the Budget Committee. And when you're trying to make the voter aware of the actual cost, this is closer by times two what was in the original order we really voted on. So I think that is a very serious change to the order. Thank you. Madam Chair, would you like me to overview what took place? I'm sorry? Would you like me to overview what took place for the public? Yeah. Well, we so we could give pretty much of an overview last night of our confusion and with what happened. The problem right now is procedural. Um, and where we are because we're in the mid middle of a public hearing. Usually we take re-votes at the end of a session, but we're looking at an amendment too. So I believe I have to shut down this public hearing to go into a vote and then re-enter it. Is that correct? Let me ask legal counsel. Procedurally, I'm, I'm a little stuck right now. <coughs> I think you should take it up now, right in the order it's in. Take it in the order and take a re-vote. Sure, if that's, getting, if that's what you wish. And I'm getting that correct from counsel. That's my recommendation. Um, to give a little bit of background on where we got stuck on this, we found um, somewhat of a defect in the wording as we were reviewing this last night, somewhere around 11 o'clock, um, with 
very little time to change it. Um, it would have to to be done today, and I'm sure there was some scrambling, Jamie, that went on today to do just that. If you'd like me to, I can tell you what we took place today. If you would. Based on the discussion last night, where that bottom line number, and again, uh, okay. we talked last night, historically this is the number that was copied from what the wording was in a prior year, mm -hmm. um, and the discussion last night was to be on an overabundance of caution that we appropriately um, noticed that with a compounded interest. Now, first, as you did with the uh, teacher's contract before, that, that number is not required by law. It's something that the town has included starting in 2014. So that we're clear, it doesn't have to be there. But over an abundance of caution last night, there was some de debate discussion. So we went back this morning, reassessed it, rechecked with council, and felt over an abundance uh, of being open. We recalculated based on the discussion from last night, Mr. Blair. Uh, we spoke to him as well today. And so we moved forward the selectmen of approved rewording of that last sentence so that we can make sure that we're being as clear as possible with what the compounded impact is over that three-year contract period. That's really it. Can you give me that last sentence again? The last sentence reads, the compounded cumulative cost impact over the three contract years is estimated to be 660,273. motion for a revote on this item? I, I will move uh, Article 14 for approval, Madam Chair. I'll second it. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, if I may ask Jamie, uh, so the Board of Selectmen met, uh, I assume, sometime today. That's correct. Uh, since we were there until midnight last night, pretty much. It had to have been today. And uh, they decided to change the wording to reflect the total uh, cumulative cost, as it's phrased in here. That's correct. And uh, as a result of the discussion from the Budget Committee that took place last night, I congratulate the Board of Selectmen for, uh, for taking action and correcting this as best as they could, given the short time frame that we have to work on, and I'm ready to vote, Madam Chair. Ma Madam Chairman. Any uh, other Mr. discussion? Ma Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Jones did not vote for this in the affirmative, so he is not allowed on your uh, policy, according to you, Mr. Jones. Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes. This is not a motion to reconsider. Right, this, this is, is a motion for the article Michael. as presented tonight. And in fairness to the article, it came in the wrong way. And um, I think that considerably affected the vote, not on the substance of the CBA, but on the substance of the number that was incorrect. So I am going to ask one more time is there anybody else on this committee who has a question before I take a re-vote on this article a new vote a new vote that's right okay all those in favor I roll call bridal <coughs> Blair uh, Kravitz Lapham Latimer LaBranch Bluff Bullockland Lad Nickerson Jones in the affirmative. Thank you. Being affirmative. Okay. Those voting no? Zanoy. Yeah. Zanoy. Okay. And that carries by a vote of 12 to 2. No abstentions. Madam Chair, the. Uh, Article 15 has the same That's right. procedural uh, need, so I move Article 15 as written. I'll no second. Can I have the correction, Jim? Could you read the correction on that last line? Sure. The last line it reads that the compounded cumulative cost impact over the three years of the contract, three contract years, is estimated to be 133,422. Okay. And that was moved by Jones, seconded by Sandy. Mm -hmm. And vote on this. Roll call from the end. Bridal. Blair. Robert. Clapham. Latimer. <coughs> LaBranch. Clough. Mullock. Lad. Snickerson. Jones in the affirmative. B. And those to the no. Zanoy. No, and Pierce. Fine. Pearson, Zanoy, no abstention. So again, the vote is 12 to 0. Madam Chair, we have the, and lastly, the same procedural challenge on Article 16. 
So I move Article 16 is written. A second. And one more time, Jamie. The compounded cumulative cost impact over the three contract years is estimated <coughs> to be $336,855. Roll call vote from the end, Nick. Bridal. Blair. Roberts. Swabble. Vladimir. LaBranch. Love. Lock. Vlad. Nickerson. Jones in the affirmative. B. And no. Pierce. Illinois. No abstentions. Again, that passes 12 to 0. All right. And now that we've cleared that up, is there anyone who wants to speak on any of these three articles? One in particular, Norm, or are you taking the whole set? I'm taking the whole set. Thank you. Norman Silverick, 75 Mill Road, spokesman for the rational taxpayers of Hampton. I recognize that the unions need an increase, no question about it. However, this increase seems to me way out of order. I received a, a uh, letter from the Social Security Administration. I see some of the members of the Budget Committee are also retirees like myself. The Social Security Administration told me I wasn't going to get any increase in 2016, but uh, in the amount of income I get, but they sure increased my medical expenses, which went up about 35%. And I'm sure that's true with anybody else who's on fixed income. And in the past, we passed, in 2014, contracts that gave a 1.25% increase to the unions. And suddenly, we're dealing with two and a half, three percent 3% increases for the next three years. I think that's way out of line with the cost of living, which is running around 1%. And it should be reflective of what is reasonable for people to expect in the way of wage increases. This agreement are totally insensitive to the taxpayers, and I would really be surprised if they were passed. I ask that the Budget Committee reconsider these three articles and re-examine their vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Silver. Uh, I'm going to move for reconsideration in mass, Article 14, 15, 16, for reconsideration. Yeah, yeah, those are the uh, police union CBAs. I'll second. That's kind of like no-brainer. Second that motion. Nancy, already seconded. I already got. All right, okay. let's take a vote. All those in favor of reconsidering the CBAs? Let's. I'm Mike about to say. Yeah, yeah. Pierce. Zanoy. <clears throat> Down this end. Jones. Yes. Sandra. Anybody else to the affirmative? So, four yes. The negatives? I should say it's easy to say anyone else. If you're against the reconsiderations, say this is a lot. This set up in the future. Uh, sitting can't, here, we can't, can't see. see. Um, I know that. We'll have to arrange it differently in the future. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. No abstentions. So reconsideration fails. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no further motions Thank of reconsideration. You very much.